Hi everyone, welcome back to Islam Box. Today, I will be talking about the sins of Muhammad. Were they forgiven or not? Muslims say that prophets are infallible, cannot make mistakes. But then again, it is not the same as sinless. And at the same time, Muslims also claim, especially in this case, uh, Prophet Muhammad, that he is sinless. Let us investigate whether it is true or not. Start from Surah Al-Fatah, Quran chapter 48, verse 1 and 2. Indeed, we have given you a clear conquest, that Allah may forgive for you what proceeded of your sin, and what will follow, and complete his favor upon you, and guide you to a straight path. So this verse is very clear. Asking Allah to guide Muhammad to a straight path, because Muhammad was not in a straight path. So that Allah may forgive his past sins and future sins. But this is not an assurance, because this says, that Allah may forgive. Right? Now, let us take a look at Surah Muhammad, verse 19. Quran chapter 47, verse 19. So know that there is no deity except Allah, and ask forgiveness for your sin, and for the believing men and believing women. And Allah knows of your movement and your resting place. This very clear as well. The verse is telling Muhammad to ask for forgiveness for him, for his sins, and the sins of the believing men and women, his followers. And what is interesting, this verse ends with a threat. You better ask for forgiveness, Muhammad, because Allah knows where you live. Interesting. Let's take a look at... Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3929, narrated Um al-Allah, an Ansari woman who gave the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet that the Ansar do lots concerning the dwelling of the immigrants. Uthman bin Masyun was decided to dwell with them. Uthman fell ill and nursed him till he died, and we covered him with his clothes. Then the Prophet came to us, and I said, O Abu Asaib, may Allah's mercy be upon you. I bear witness that Allah has honored you. On that, the Prophet said, How do you know that Allah has honored him? I replied, I do not know. May my father and my mother be sacrificed for you. O Allah's messenger, but who else is worthy of it, if it's not Uthman? And he said, As to him, by Allah, death has overtaken him. And I hope the best for him. By Allah, though I am the apostle of Allah, yet I do not know what Allah will do to me. By Allah, I will never assert the piety of anyone after him. That made me sad. When I slept, I saw in a dream a flowing stream for Uthman bin Mazun. I went to Allah's messenger and told him of it. He remarked that this that symbolizes his deeds so this also clear in this hadith that Muhammad said even though he is an apostle of Allah he does not know what Allah will do to him right? and that's why this thing is actually I will take this verse right now Surah Al-Aqaf, verse 9. Say, I am not something original among the messengers, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow that which is revealed to me, and I am not but a clear warner. So, Muhammad con uh, confirmed here, he is just a warner. He does not know what will be done to him, and you, us the followers of Muhammad. So this 
confirming the the hadith in this hadith in Sahih Al Bukhari hadith number 3929. Now we will go to Jami at Tirmidhi. It's an interesting hadith here. Jami at Tirmidhi hadith number 3546. Ali bin Abi Talib narrated that message of Allah said the stingy person is the one before who I am mentioned. And he does not send salt upon me. Salat here means prayer. But so many times Muslim miss quote unquote mistranslating it. So every time when a Muslim mentioning the name of Muhammad, they will they will have uh, he or she will have to to invoke blessing and peace. For Muhammad. But here Salat is actually a prayer. So I will explain it in a bit. So now I will take you to Surah al azab verse. Surah al azab verse 56. Indeed Allah confers blessing upon the Prophet and his angel. O you who have believed, ask blessing upon him and ask peace. This confirming what we were talking before in Jami at Trimidi. But this is a fake translation. Why I said fake? Because they mistranslating it on purpose. This is the real translation. The real translation, almost real. They the they hear Muhammad or Al Hilali and Musim Khan. They did not change the word salat. But they mistranslate it as grace, honor, blessing, mercy, which is just very misleading. Salat means prayer. First, I will, I will take, I will show you here without opening the whole thing. Right? Salat, also known as namas, also spread, spelled, sorry spelled Salat, are prayers performed by Muslims. Salat are prayers performed by Muslims. So, it is not anything like this. It is not grace. It is not, doesn't mean honor, not blessing, not mercy. Not blessing, not praise. This is all fake translation here. Very misleading. So now, if we read the whole verse, according to Hilali and Musim Khan, let's read together. Allah sends his salat on the prophet and also his angel. To uh, all you who believe, send your salat on him and greet greet him with the Islamic way of greeting. This is also crazy. I don't know why people translating like this. There's in, in Arabic, there's nothing like salute him with Islamic way of greeting. There's nothing like this. Anyway, so now here. If you, like I always say, Islam is like a jigsaw puzzle, you know. You have to put the pieces together one by one patiently. And then you will see the big picture of garbage. A big picture of garbage. Now, so the verse is asking Allah to send his prayer. Allah, Allah sending prayers here. That's what he's saying. This is what crazy. It is this is not um, the only verse said, talking like this. Right? Of course, th there's other verse also in Al Zab, verse 43. It is he 
it is he who confers blessing upon you and his angel. The, this, this verse is actually very similar to verse 56. Right? It's very similar. So, saying Allah sending prayers for Muhammad. So, Muslims are required to pray for Muhammad. Asking Allah to quote unquote sends prayer to send prayers for Muhammad. Give him peace. Why? Because Muhammad does not have peace until now. Muslims are not sure if Muhammad is resting in peace as we speak. That's why they're still praying, asking Allah to give him peace. And the funny thing is a lot of times like 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 as we have read. Muslims are required to ask blessing for Muhammad. But I don't know, Muhammad has been dead for about 1400 years. What kind of blessings is a dead person need? Does the, what kind of blessing does a, a dead person need? Dead people do not need any blessing. Because if we talk about blessings, it's like, or maybe a peaceful life is blessing is like about peaceful life about safety about health or wealth job family relationship but dead people do not need any of this therefore the blessing here is not about that but it's, it is actually salvation. Muslims ask King salvation for Muhammad, their prophet, and peace. I will show you the, the prayer actually. It's called Durud Ibrahim. The name is Durud Ibrahim, as you can see on the top. But it is not about Ibrahim at all. Why? Let us read. This is the, the prayer here. O oh Allah, send prayers, see? Send prayers upon Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad just as you have sent prayers upon Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim. Verily, you are the praiseworthy, the glorious. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, just as you have blessed Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Verily, you are the praiseworthy, the glorious. Look at this. First, before I go any further, I will show you. See? Why Muslim asking Allah to send prayers? Is this crazy or what? Anyway, now we go to the topic. Back to the topic. This... Even the name, like I said, is Durud Ibrahim. It's nothing about Ibrahim. The prayer is not for Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. It's not for Abraham. The prayer is for Muhammad and his family. Right? This. Now, they have to do this salutation. This is the salutation. This it's not the salutation, just a simple salutation when Muslims mention the name of Muhammad and then they have to say, Allah, he will do it, you know? Yada, yada, stuff like that. This is not as simple as that. This inserted in the prayer. This is like a prayer. Prayer, prayer. Now, let's go next. This is the difference between Muhammad and Jesus. This is where Jesus is speaking here in Surah Maryam, verse 33. And peace is on me the day I was born and the day I will die and the day I am raised alive. So, you can see three people here. First, Abraham. The Muslims do not pray for Abraham, for peace and blessing. They ask Allah to give Muhammad peace and blessing. Blessing here, like I explained earlier, is not health, 
is not nothing about wealth, nothing about anything. But actually, the blessing here means salvation. They do not ask this for any other prophet, especially Jesus. Why? Quran Surah Maryam verse 33 is also very clear. Jesus said, and peace is on me the day I was born, uh, I was born, and the day I will die, and the day I am raised alive. Jesus does not need peace from us. Jesus does not need prayers from us for his salvation and peace and blessings. Why? Because Jesus is the peace. Jesus can give peace and blessing. That's why he does not need any of those. He doesn't need us to pray for that, for him anyway. Okay? Now, it is very clear that Muhammad is not clear about is not clear about his salvation. Even Muslims do not know whether Muhammad will be saved or not, will go to heaven or not. That's why they're still praying for him. But this is the problem. There's a hadith saying that Muhammad confirming ten people will be in paradise. I will show you the hadith. Jamia Trimidi. Hadith number 3747. Narrated Abdul Rahman bin Auf. The messenger of Allah said, Abu Bakr is in paradise. Umar is in paradise. Uthman is in paradise. Ali is in paradise. Taha is in paradise. Azubair is in paradise. Abdul Rahman bin Auf is in paradise. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas is in paradise, Sa'id bin Zaid is in paradise, and Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah is in paradise. This is the problem. How come a person who is not sure about his first salvation, who is not sure whether he is going to paradise or not, can tell us that these 10 people will be in paradise? How come? And this hadith is graded as sahih, authentic. Very confusing, right? Very confusing. And now you have to remember this actually by Sunni Muslims that if you ask. Shia Muslim, if you give this name to Shia Muslim, Shia Muslim on, only admit, well, will say all these nine people will be in hell, in the lowest layer of hell. Only Ali will be in paradise. Shia will give different opinion. And not only that, Forgive uh, forget Shia. But if we if we take a look at Sunni other uh, different um, different source, this name, the last name is very different. Abu Ubaidah here is very different. You know who? Muawiyah. Let us take a look. First I will show you uh, a hadith that is a little bit vague. This one is uh, Bukhari, 2799. Narat al bin Malik. Um Haram said, Once the Prophet slept in my house near to me and got up smiling. I said, What makes you smile? He replied, Some of my followers who were presented to me sailing on this green sea like kings on thrones. I said, Oh Allah's Messenger, invoke Allah to make me one of them. So the, the Prophet invoked Allah for her and went to sleep again. He did the same. And Um Haram, Haram re re repeated her question and he gave the same reply. She said, invoke Allah to make me one of them. 
He said, you are among the first batch. Later on it happened that she went out in the company of her husband, Ubadah bin As Samit, who went for jihad. And it was the first time the Muslims undertook a naval expedition led by Muawiyah. When the expedition came to an end, and they were returning to Sham, a riding animal was presented to her to ride. But the animal let her fall and thus she died. Wow, that's sad. Anyway, as you can see, this expedition, the first, you know, Muhammad said, whoever go there, the first batch will go, will become like kings on thrones, right? One of them is Muawiyah. Now, this this hadith is vague, right? Oh man, I mean it's not vague, but in vague in terms of that Muawiyah will go to heaven. But I will show you the next one. But so you know that Muawiyah is in the first batch, right? This one is from. Bukhari, 2924, narrated Khalid bin Madan that Umayyar bin al-Aswad al-Anasi told him that he went to Ubadah bin Asamit while he was staying in his house at the seashore of Hims with his wife, Umharam. Umar said, Umharam informed us that she heard the Prophet saying, Paradise is granted to the first batch of my followers who will undertake a naval expedition. Um Haram added, I said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, will I be amongst them? He replied, You are amongst them. The Prophet then said, you, The first army amongst my followers who will invade Caesar city will be forgiven their sins. I asked, Will I be one of them, O oh, Allah's Messenger? He, re he replied in the negative. <laughs> Anyway, so now, this just to confirm that, again, this is the first batch. And the first batch of my followers will be who will undertake a naval expedition is granted paradise. As you can see, now we go back to Bukhari 2799. One of the people in the first batch is Muawiyah. You know why I mentioned the name of Muawiyah? Because generally, Muslims do not see Muawiyah as a good Muslim, as a good person. They hate Muawiyah. So you see, first, Jami Timidi mentioned the name of Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah. But then again, in different hadiths, actually, the, 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 ten, the, the, tenth, the last name is not Ubaidah, it's actually Muawiyah. Because Muawiyah is also granted heaven. Because why? He was one of the first batch of army. That is, <laughs> that was uh, going for expedition never expedition so this how islamic teaching is very confusing a, a, a prophet who who is not sure of his future will he will he be in heaven or not granted 10 people in paradise telling that 10 people will be in paradise and then Another on top of that, that's very confusing already. And on top of that, there's another hadith saying different person will be in paradise. And the problem, the biggest problem, of course, Muawiyah is hated by Muslim. Because Muawiyah is one of the first uh 
It's called fitnah. It's a Muslim civil war kind of like, you know, one of one of them involved Muawiyah. And Muawiyah is actually was against Prophet's uh, family, Prophet Muhammad's family, especially Hassan and Hussein. So in case if you don't know. Now, so now at the end of this video, I hope everyone is clear about the position of Muhammad. Muhammad is not forgiven of his sins as Muslims claim. If anything, even, even Allah himself telling him to ask for forgiveness. And again, until today, Muslims still praying for Muhammad. Muslims are still praying, asking Allah to give Muhammad peace and blessing. Blessing here, I, just, I need to remind you, blessing here is not wealth, it's not about health, because he's dead. The blessing here is about his salvation. Because he's not sure about his salvation. And of course, I will close this video with a reminder. How Jesus is very different. Jesus is very different here. Because Jesus does not need us to pray for him. We pray to Jesus. Asking for peace and forgiveness. Jesus does not need any of that. And above all, of course, Jesus does not need us to pray for him. We have to pray to him. Asking him for peace and forgiveness. That's all from me. Thank you for listening and watching. I hope this video is clear enough for you guys. And for those who is sure of his destination or her destination, of, may God grant you peace and blessings. And for those who is not sure where he or she will end end up may god grant you peace and blessing have a nice life